China is a country, with an ancient civilization. Like many other, ancient civilizations on earth. Its people viewed the sky, with awe and imagination. They created a unique, astronomical system. Including sophisticated, instruments. And rich astronomical records. These have, become treasures of human history. In the early 17th century, Western missionaries began, to introduce ideas, about modern astronomy to China. With the cooperation, and effort of China's modern science pioneers, China began development, of the modern science of astronomy. medicine is very rarely given as just single herbs in high concentration. They're actually given in formulas, meaning many herbs combined together in a synergistic way to treat the individual patient. It took 2,000 years to complete, and it stretches over 4,000 miles. In a recent worldwide poll, it was voted one of the world's greatest treasures. The Great Wall of China is a man-made miracle that unites over one billion people and more than 50 ethnic groups. It's a powerful national icon and supreme among the seven wonders of China. proof of perseverance and persistence. The Great Wall is the path connecting the ancient China with the modern. A symbol of unity and protection. Miraculous and remarkable feat of ingenuity. The Great Wall is a symbol of the longevity of the Chinese civilization. Emperor Qin was a visionary with enormous ambitions. He began two massive projects. The unification of the Great Wall and the building of his own tomb containing the renowned terracotta warriors. 2,000 years after his death, these remain two of China's largest and most treasured icons. Human history is replete with the accounts of rise and fall of civilizations and empires. Glimpse of the civilization and its outstanding town planning can be seen at the site of Mohanjadaro. The cities of Harappa civilization were essentially divided into two parts except Dhulvira which had three. The part which was towards the west was higher, built on a raised hill and was known as the citadel. The other part which was on the east was called the lower town and was of a lesser height. The citadel was a prominent mound surrounded by fortified walls. It was the nerve center of the city. A huge tank called the Great Bath was constructed for water. Made of plaster and natural tar, it was probably used for bathing purpose by the rulers and had steps on both sides leading down to the water. The lower town was the residential area where the common folk lived. It was a thriving economic and cultural center. The houses were single or double-storied, whereas the streets were laid out in a grid-like pattern, intersecting each other at right angles. Houses opened onto smaller lanes on the outside and courtyards on the inside. Within the houses, separate rooms were made for different activities. Some rooms appear to have been set aside for bathing. 
Waste water from the bathroom was directed to the drains which lined the inner streets. Larger drains on the main street assisted the flow of water towards the outskirts of the city. This proved the existence of well-planned drainage system. The city received its water supply from large public wells. This provided water for bathing and washing purposes for the citizens. As it is with everything, these Indus Valley cities too started showing signs of decay and decline. Floods, overcrowding, lack of control by rulers and indifferent maintenance could be the reason for this great civilization's inability to retain its glory and slowly declined. Ironically, human history is repeated with such pattern of growth and decay and is well articulated in Shelley's famous poem, Ozymandias. To quote the last line from it, 